please welcome to the stage, my dear friend, Mr. Brad Thanks for coming out. I appreciate you guys. I really do, honestly. Uh, it's been a dream of mine uh, to uh, one day uh, film a special in the uh, storage room of a bowling alley. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> the old saying. Uh, that's how you make it to the dark, damp room <laughs> where they store chairs in a bowling alley. <laughs> Just to let you guys know off the top, uh, I am also uh, unsure uh, about my shirt. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do like it, but um, I also don't know if it's pajamas or not. Uh, I think it might be pajamas. Why is there a fly in my special? <laughs> Showbiz sucks. <laughs> <laughs> sucks. Put all this friggin' stuff together and there's just a fly. <laughs> Very prominent fly. And he'll come back. <laughs> Every time there's, there's like a, an important part, he'll just be like... Ugh. <laughs> oh, but... Uh, Thanks, thanks for coming out. Thanks for, uh, for being in a, in a dark room. Uh, I'm really happy we can do this again. And you know, COVID's winding down or, or back up. I'm not sure what it's doing right now. One thing I am sure of uh, is there are no windows. Uh, <laughs> but we are all here. We're locked in. And it feels good to be back. Um, I don't think there's going to be another lockdown. Uh, I don't think so. You know, I got very lonely when there was a lockdown. Uh, I lived in a studio apartment. I depended a lot on uh, FaceTime. I would text my friends, can we FaceTime? Can we FaceTime? You know, sometimes they text me back and they like, Graham, we cannot FaceTime because uh, we have uh, an Android phone. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you have to download Google Hangouts. <laughs> Or, or WhatsApp, you know? So. <laughs> My goodness, what? I, I, I live in, in New York City, you know, and uh, having a friend with an Android phone asking you to download <laughs> Google Hangouts. <laughs> is the new come to my apartment in New Jersey? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no, no. I don't even know how to do that. And I also don't believe you that it has the same stuff now. So spend a little more money. Because you look poor. You're showing up green on my phone and you look like shit. <laughs> and I'm rich. I'm a coastal elite. I have a cracked iPhone 8. <laughs> you, you will respect me. <laughs> I'm rich, so I hate the poor. Um, <laughs> hate them. Um, every time I step over a homeless man, I say, work harder, bitch, you know? <laughs> Pull up your bootstraps, you know? Um, and then they become rich. Uh, um, they just didn't know they had to pull up their bootstraps. Um, we all know that schizophrenia is a sign of laziness. Uh, I am the world's preeminent uh, Reaganomics comedian. Uh, trickle down economy. That's what I say when I step over a, a homeless person. Trickle down. And then they're rich. So I, I help them. I help them. I tried to be a, a bandana guy in the beginning of the pandemic. You know, remember that era? A few of us tried to be ban bandana people. Like, this, 
this flap, this flap will do it, you know? I'm not gonna be one of those losers wearing a medical mask. I'm the bad boy of the pandemic. I'm the bad boy. I bought a multi-pack of bandanas off Amazon. Bad boys do that. <laughs> and when you buy a multi-pack of bandanas off Amazon, uh, it is also, it turns out, uh, a good way to find out if you live in a blood or a crip neighborhood. <laughs> I found out uh, Brooklyn is mostly bloods, and uh, I, I am a blood. Uh, big, big time blood. Um, so if there are any uh, crips um, in here tonight, uh, boy do I hate you. Uh, I, I hate you so much. And, uh, get out. Uh, get out of my, off my turf. We don't like it when people are on our turf. Uh, uh, all right, yeah, please leave, that's our motto. Um, I'm, I'm from Canada originally, and that's the, the motto of the Canadian contingent um, of the Bloods. Please leave! I, I'll say this, uh, my, my career was going better before the, the pandemic. I had a, uh, a comedy special come out I was very proud of, um, and uh, so I, I signed up for, uh, for Google alerts. Uh, anyone here can sign up for Google alerts. Uh, all it is is Google emails you anytime your name is mentioned in the news, right? So I signed up for Google alerts and then one day uh, I got like a whole bunch of alerts, right? I was like, oh, someone wrote about my special. The kid's gonna pop off, you know? <laughs> the grind, you know? And, uh, and then I clicked on it and this is 100% true. Uh, there is a rapist in Australia. <laughs> with my exact name. <laughs> and now when you Google my name, Graham K, he comes up first. You know, cause his industry was not affected at all by the pandemic. <laughs> right to the top. And, uh, I, I tell you what, uh, and boy oh boy, uh, is it bad for the biz? Uh, so here's the thing, I hope he dies. Uh, I, do. I really hope he dies. And I, I hope, I don't think they have the death penalty in Australia, it's like a pretty liberal place, so well, I hope a shark gets him. Um, <laughs> but what I, hope, what I hope happens to him, is actually what happened to the, the SeaWorld employee, uh, the trainer, in, uh, yeah, in the documentary Blackfish that came out a couple years ago. If you don't remember, uh, in this documentary Blackfish, uh, what happened was is I guess Shamu the whale got so pissed off uh, that he was in captivity that he, he just snapped one day and he dragged his trainer down to the bottom of this like you know really deep tank let him go, let him swim to the top, and then drag him down. Let him swim to the top, <laughs> drag him down. Let him swim, get it over and over, torturing him until eventually he did drown him. But before he drowned him, uh, there's no easy way to say this, um, the whale uh, bit off the trainer's genitals. <laughs> yeah. And I guess they, they say this to really uh, hammer home that these animals do not like being in captivity. <laughs> you know. But uh, my takeaway was, uh, Fish know where our dicks are? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Who told them? That's supposed to be our little secret, you know? <laughs> they think about our dicks? Because <laughs> the, the narrator was like, uh, he was like, and then he bit off his genitals. And then he just kept talking. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Because the trainer was wearing a wetsuit, you know, and then the whale was like, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. And, uh, and he likes it, and I'm gonna take it away. <laughs> and they were very specific 
they weren't like he bit his torso. You know, it's got like a big whale mouth. They were like very just like he bit his genitals off. <laughs> Which means the the whale was like. <laughs> So evil and delicate. <laughs> so mean. That trainer just, just was like a little part of that trainer was like, holy jeez. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> I don't bring all that up uh, to make light of a, a very serious subject, you know. Um, I, I bring it up actually as, as, a, as a warning to all of you uh, to stay away from the north coast of Australia. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Dirty Graham is, uh, well, he's up for parole. And, yeah, and well, I know that of course, well, because I get the alerts. <laughs> I, I'm unintentionally keeping pretty close tabs on this asshole. And, uh, He's out in November, so get your tickets now, I guess. Uh, but I did get, I got lonely in the pandemic. I downloaded a dating app called Hinge. And uh, it's just a regular dating app if you don't know what it is. And this is, uh, this is back when there was like no restaurants open, no patios open, none of that was open. And, uh, but Hinge was still like, uh, uh, you, you can still meet people in parks. That's what it said. <laughs> I don't know if any of you remember this. On like the front page of Hinge, it was like, you could still meet people in parks. <laughs> so basically, Hinge was trying to encourage men into luring women into parks. <laughs> and I did, I got one in there. Uh, <laughs> sure, I lured one, sure I did, yeah. <laughs> I had trail mix. I'm like, this way. <laughs> it's safe and fun. I'm nice. I've never been to Australia. <laughs> I showed her my passport, and she had a seat. And um, we, had a, uh, we had a socially distanced date. Uh, uh, you know, very hot. I don't know if you guys have ever had, a, had, ever had one of those. Uh, we had the special kind of socially distanced date where at the end of it, you end up uh, fucking a stranger. Uh, yeah, whoopsie daisy. And um, we started the date six feet apart wearing masks. Opposite ends of a park bench. And we finished the date with her finger in my butt. Life is full of turns. Um, Nooks and crannies, really. Um, I found out that night I'm actually more of a nook. Uh, I'm not a loose cranny, I'm a tight little nook. Uh, I'm a lady. And um, I, now look, I had never had that done before. And, um, at, you know, at, at one point um, during the, uh, Procedure. Uh, <laughs> she, she looked up at me and she's like, you're not enjoying this, are you? You know, and I had that, that look uh, on your face. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had that look on your face you get when you know, you're like on a roller coaster and you're like, this is far too high. Uh, <laughs> you know. I'm strapped in, so I'm gonna have to close my eyes and muscle through these next few minutes. And, uh, um, maybe, there, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I need to do work on myself. Um, but it's hard for me uh, to feel like a traditional man uh, you know, with my uh, legs above my head. Uh, yeah. Uh, hard, hard to feel dominant um, holding your own ankles. Uh, that's uh, hard to get in the bone zone. Um, you know? No, be easy. And um, but anyway, now that uh, 
someone's been in me. Um, <laughs> now that someone's been inside of me, I know uh, exactly what it's like to be a woman. Uh, yeah. And uh, now, now that I know that, um, I, I can say this. Uh, gentlemen, cut your nails. <laughs> For the love of God, cut your goddamn nails. This, this lady I was with did not cut her nails. Um, no, no. Uh, it's almost as if she'd been intentionally growing them for years. Uh, strengthening them with vitamins. Uh, clean me out like a wire brush. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I said it. It's a medical term. Anyway, we, we, we started, we started uh, uh, dating after. Um, you kind of have to. Uh, <laughs> after someone wears you like a glove, uh, <laughs> you become their little puppet boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My little act out there, that was nice. Uh, we, start, we did start dating for a while, but uh, it didn't work out. Um, there, was, there was a bit uh, of an age gap. She was 24, I was 39. I know, I'm awesome. Uh, um, no, it was gross, obviously. But uh, <laughs> uh, what happened was she didn't do anything wrong. I did, I did something wrong. Um, I, uh, I, I accidentally said one day the wrong thing. Uh, one, one day I accidentally said uh, the phrase, uh, when I was your age. Oh. I know, I know. I know, I know. I heard, I, I heard myself say it, and I, I stood up. I threw up. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Um, and I left, and I have not talked to her since. Uh, no. I uh, have not responded uh, to any of her TikTok messages. Um, I don't know how. Uh, I keep checking Facebook, and they're not there. So... If uh, a younger person would show me, um, yeah, I don't like, I don't like TikTok. Uh, I'm still, on f I'm Facebook generation. We, I don't, too much dancing. No dancing. <laughs> no dancing. <laughs> too much dancing. No, I'm Facebook. We don't like Facebook generation. We don't like dancing. No, no. We like paragraphs. <laughs> Yes, long, uneducated, <laughs> political diatribes. <laughs> yeah. I don't like dancing, no. I like a social media where you can tell your uncle to fuck off. <laughs> fuck you, Larry. <laughs> Just be having a perfectly good day and then log on, tell the man who taught you to ride a bicycle to fuck off. <laughs> Sweet. But I did learn something from that relationship. Um, it should be uh, illegal uh, to date somebody that is two apps younger than you. Uh, yeah. It's too much, you know. But, you know, I, I, I am dating somebody more uh, age appropriate now. Uh, she's an Instagrammer. Uh, so, you know, we just love reels. Um, God, what a life, you know. And uh, she's great, though. I'm glad I finally found somebody, because uh, I think I was in a, a race against time uh, to get uh, a serious girlfriend before my, uh, my bald spot got too big. Um, you know, you may not notice, but because uh, I'm doing a front comb over, no one's ever thought of it before. Uh, <laughs> but it's getting pretty thin back there, um, and 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 I, women are always like, "Oh, it doesn't matter because you're tall. No one can see up there. You're tall, you know. No one can see. You're tall." And I'm always like, "Well, um, I sit quite a bit." <laughs> Uh, 
I'm, I'm seated like 98% of my life, I feel, right? Like, especially on, on dates, you know, like I never invite a woman to dinner and I'm like, uh, I stand. Uh, yeah. I'll be up here for the next hour or so, lording over you. So, uh, yeah. pass me up my soup. Hot, 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 hot. Um, hot, hot, hot. Um, joke is dumb. Uh, well, I am tall. You know, I'm uh, 6'4", you know, and I stand up straight. And um, I, uh, I hear a lot of, sh like, guys, a lot of shorter guys go, you know, oh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not 5'8", I'm 5'9", you know. <laughs> or, uh, you know, I'm not 5'11", I'm 6 foot, you know. And I'm, I'm here to let you guys know, uh, as, as a tall, uh, <laughs> that um, none of you are people. Uh, <laughs> I am your God. <laughs> yes. I'll help you with your overhead luggage, you little scamp. Uh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Just, just kidding. Um, and this, it, it makes no sense to be tall, you know, in, in this century. It's completely useless. Tall people, we, we die earlier, that's true. We do die, die earlier. And uh, also, uh, I'm left-handed, we also die earlier. Yeah, so uh, basically what I'm trying to say is, um, this is my last show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I'll be dead soon and uh, you, you, you little, you short kings can get your little raccoon hands all over my girlfriend, you know? Yeah. Good with clasps, you know? Um. <laughs> I love how that, every time I tell that joke, there's always someone who's left-handed who's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> I had so many dreams. <laughs> I started losing my hair, um, you know, a few years ago, 10 years ago, actually, and I, I, I started taking those hair pills, and, uh, but it was very scary. You know, I was single back then, and I, and I was like, you know, uh, I went to the doctor. You know, I was like, you know, because I, I was losing my hair, and um, I, don't know, I don't know what God or whoever was thinking when they designed my body, you know? It's like, I want Graham to be okay, good looking until he's about 35, and then I would like hairs to slowly start falling out the top of his head. I would like hairs to slowly start falling out the very top of his head, and then I would like new hairs <laughs> to start growing out of his shoulder blades. Yes! Women are gonna love this switchamaroo. <laughs> oh yeah, they like that, you know. I was like scared, you know. I was like, I feel still feel young, you know. So I went to the doctor and I was like, well, how, how am I losing my hair and getting hairier? What? <laughs> Why? And then this is what he said. He said, Graham. Um, uh, men who lose their hair have an elevated level of testosterone. Too much, you know. That's why balder guys, bald guys have hairier bodies. Uh, that's why you have a stronger jawline. That's probably why you have a higher libido. And that's probably also why I'm treating you for chlamydia right now. Uh, so. Quit asking so many questions. Um, Did you guys know that that is cured with one pill of penicillin and then in 24 hours you're 100% cured? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they should tell you that before they tell you you have chlamydia. <laughs> that should be the order of info <laughs> that comes at you. I thought I was gonna have to buy a leather jacket and talk to kids after school about my life. <laughs> Start sitting backwards on chairs, you know? Um. <laughs> so 
a lot of, I see a lot of you know people looking at me like I'm a I'm a gross guy. <laughs> I'm an old gross man, you know. But uh, I'll ask I'll ask you you got you ladies this. Um, I I'll tell you this. I have a certificate uh, from my local clinic saying that I'm 100% chlamydia free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do any of, of these gentlemen uh, have said certificate? No. No. Yeah, well, you are playing with fire. Uh, quite literally. It burns. Oh, boy. But I, I was, you know, um, back in my single days, you know, I was always jealous of... Uh, my, my gay friends, you know, I, wor I worked at a restaurant in Chelsea. I was, all, all, all my buddies there, I was always jealous of them, you know, because it just seemed a lot easier uh, when you're single anyway. Uh, it's less of a cat and mouse game, you know, when you're a gay guy. Less of a cat and mouse when you're single. Less of a cat and mouse. Uh, more like uh, two cats. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking each other's dicks. <laughs> Two beautiful self-grooming animals. <laughs> <laughs> Running at full speed towards each other's cat dicks. Um, <laughs> seem, seem like they're having a good time. But, <laughs> I will say this, uh, every straight, I was, it was in my 20s when I worked there, and every straight guy should work in a, a gay neighborhood in the service industry. Um, just for a, like a summer. Just so you know what it's like for a man to hit on you. It's crazy. Because when, when they want it, oh, oh boy do they want it. They really want it. I'm like, I'm not all, all that, you know, but my God. Uh, and I, 15 years ago, I was, a real, I was a real piece, let me tell you. And I, uh, they had me on the patio, and I was uh, fresh off the, the Greyhound from Canada, and uh, uh, so, uh, somebody smiled at me from across the street, and uh, you know, I was like, you know, Canadian, oh, hello, yes. And, <laughs> and um, he just started, he just immediately crossed the street and like walked right towards me, and I, I guess what, saying, like going like nodding yes, uh, hello, uh, <laughs> It means, uh, yes, come here and use all my holes. <laughs> use them. <laughs> T twice, twice in one year, I had men offer me, cross the street, when I was working the patio, offer me a hundred dollars <laughs> to suck my dick. <laughs> one hundred, and then I, one hundred and then. One hundred and then. I, I have never had a woman <laughs> Say hello. Uh, I've never. Uh, but this is how. This is how I know that. Uh, you know, you're. It's not a choice. You're. You're born gay because if it. If it was a choice, right there in that moment, I would have obviously chosen to be gay. It's a really good deal. I would have gotten a hundred dollars. <laughs> then I would have got my dick sucked. <laughs> then I would have unchosen to be gay. <laughs> and then I'd be like, I'm back, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Time to go to the strippers, see those boobies I like so much. <laughs> Cause I'm straight.
I, uh, you know, I'm uh, getting, uh, getting older, getting older, you know. I uh, just turned 41, and uh, not, not old, but um, I think we can all agree that I am running out of time. Uh, <laughs> you know, I gotta grow up. I, you know, I gotta start talking like a 41-year-old. You know, I gotta start using 41-year-old words like, uh, uh, Christ! Uh, <laughs> bullshit! <laughs> I gotta start calling people a prick. <laughs> Timothy's a prick. <laughs> Got to start saying stuff like, this is Elise. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm going to wake up with a 14-year-old son named Michael. Get your head out of your ass, Michael. <laughs> Quit loafing around. Get a job. <laughs> Farting around up there. You know when you're 14, that summer when you're 14, and you just, you just ha you don't have a job? Dads just hate it. <laughs> they hate it. Uh, he's up there, sleeping. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> up there, farting around, playing his video games. <laughs> Get a job. <laughs> Get a job. He was like, you gotta get a job. I was like, how am I gonna get a job? I'm 14. I think it's illegal. He's like, you're gonna print off some resumes and then hand them out to businesses. I was like, resumes? What am I gonna put in the resume? Never had a job. I kid you not, he made me print off a big stack of resumes. All they said on it was, uh, raked Judith Hoy's leaves. <laughs> From October 1995 to October 1995. <laughs> banner career. <laughs> and then he would just on the way to work, he'd drop me off in different parts of Ottawa and just be like, there's some businesses there. <laughs> and he'd give me bus fare to bus home. <laughs> and it wasn't just like restaurants. He'd like go to an office tower and be like, go up there. <laughs> like an office? <laughs> I don't know what kind of depression era economy. <laughs> you think this is? I remember, I re this is a true story, what I'm about to tell you. I remember this. I, he was like, oh, there are some businesses. And I remember I got in the elevator, and I was like, I don't know, six. <laughs> Maybe the best businesses are on six. doors open and I got out and there was a secretary there and she's like hello and I was like I was like hi and she's like uh, can I uh, can I help you and I was like I'd like a job she goes okay uh, where would you like a job I'm like here she, 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 go, she goes here I go yes here she goes you want a job here I'm like yes uh, I kid you not she said this she goes but this is the unemployment office. <laughs> I like randomly walked into the unemployment office, didn't read what it was. <laughs> and was like, I'm a little boy, I break leaves. Give me a job. <laughs> you know, getting older, you know, and um, I'd uh, like to have kids, but I think, the problem is I think it's too late for me to have kids. Um, <laughs> Some old horny guy back there. 
75. I have sired quite a few children. <laughs> I do think it's too late for me, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because I'm too tired. I'm already too tired. All day, every day, I am tired. I'm tired right now. Uh, and I'll tell you what, audience, I have not had a long day. <laughs> nope, I'm a comedian. I woke up, had breakfast, and I came straight here. <laughs> I am exhausted from all my duties. Can't throw a kid in the mix. Uh, they crap their pants, don't they? For like years, for like two years, they're just crapping their pants every day. And, you know, that seems like a lot, you know. And by the way, I figured it out, side note, um, that's why all of our parents uh, don't respect us. Um, <laughs> all of our parents love us, probably, but n none of our parents talk to us like they respect us. Uh, it's because first impressions are very important. <laughs> and no matter what you achieve in your life, you can be like, Mom, I, I just graduated from, from brain surgery school. What do you think of that? And she'll be like, I, I think that's the guy who used to shit his pants. <laughs> Better tell him to wear a jacket, even though he knows it's winter. <laughs> She'll call me and be like, are you eating? Yes, I'm eating. <laughs> we'll, be, uh, we'll be texting, and I'll be getting ready to fly back up to, to Ottawa for a little visit, you know? And then she'll text me back and be like, email me your flights. Email me your flights. I'll be like, all, all right, we're... We're texting right now, but I'll, 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 I'll hop on over to email for you. They love it over there. And, and then the day of uh, the flight, she's like, uh, just a reminder, uh, you're flying out of uh, JFK Airport. I know there's plenty of airports down there. I do not want you to go to the wrong one. I'm like, Mom, I'm so old. I know how to read a ticket. I'm pretty sure when she pictures me in New York, I'm just walking around Times Square with no shirt on. Just like, <laughs> where's the sky bus <laughs> to see my mommy and daddy? I'm a dumb little boy and I'm so hungry. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. She's like, there's my son. I better text him. <laughs> they were good parents, you know. They deserve grandkids, I guess. But uh, they were good parents. Well, there, there were uh, some beatings. Um, <laughs> but it was the 80s and 90s. And uh, beatings had uh, better branding back then. <laughs> Very good branding. Uh, it was called spanking. <laughs> And if you are Gen Z, you know, this may shock you to find out, um, <laughs> but uh, buckle up. Uh, <laughs> between uh, about 1996 and the beginning of time. <laughs> the, the very beginning of time. It was 100% socially acceptable um, for your parents uh, in public <laughs> if you were crying, uh, no matter what the reason, maybe you'd never seen hail before and you thought the sky was falling and you were crying, your parents uh, were, it was perfectly socially acceptable for them in public to take off your pants <laughs> and then wind up and fucking hit you in the ass. <laughs> and then other people would walk by, other citizens, <laughs> and they'd be like, good. <laughs> Discipline. Fantastic parenting. 
Surely that four-year-old did something <laughs> to warrant being disrobed in Sears. <laughs> Surely there's a good reason why there's a man with a mustache hitting a little boy behind an unhooked washing machine. Is that? This is a younger audience. Is that too intense? <laughs> My name's Graham Kay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much.